Are Prince Harry and Meghan Markle being less than truthful with Netflix. Hello everyone, welcome to Royal News Network. My name is Brittany and today we are talking about a report from the New York Post, page six, talking about how there have been inconsistencies in Harry's statements between the memoir and the documentary series. And these two things should not clash because it is Harry's perspective. Harry's apparently telling these stories, but apparently Harry can't get his own story straight. And that is deeply, deeply problematic. In addition to Harry and Meghan requesting additional edits after the Queen died, many at Netflix are scratching their heads going, uh, why, why do we have two different stories here? We should have one story. And I think it raises a lot of serious questions for Harry and Meghan and is really a massive hit on their integrity because it's one thing for two people to witness a crime and have kind of some different details, different interpretations. But it's another thing entirely for one person to be telling two separate stories. It raises a lot of questions about your integrity, your authenticity, and your truthfulness. And it really severely damages your brand because I think companies look at that and go, okay, we're putting a lot on our line here. We know, Netflix knows, hey, we're dealing with pressure from the royal family already about the next season of The Crown. And then we have Prince Harry over here perhaps opening us up to litigation because he can't even keep his own story straight. And I'm sorry, but if you've ever watched a crime show, a true crime show, or even a fictionalized crime show, what do we think when a perpetrator or a character can't seem to get their story straight? Hmm, oftentimes most of the audience and most normal people can think, well, maybe they're lying about that. And I think that's a deep problem for Harry and Meghan because their entire brand rests on their version of what happened while they were royals. And if that's wrong, if they can't even get the story straight on that, then basically their entire empire crumbles. I mean, I think it's already a crumbling empire, but it really is going to be raised to the ground because at the end of the day, truthfulness does matter. And I think Harry and Meghan have a very loose relationship with it. But if you guys haven't been here before, hello, my name is Brittany. And on this channel, I provide compelling royal commentary about the latest news and a little bit of gossip as well. I also will review television shows and movies related to royals and cover a bit of history too. So if those are things you love and enjoy, feel free to hit that subscribe button. I have also just launched my royal fashion news channel. So if you love royals and you love royal fashion, like tiaras, jewelry, the clothing, the, the shoes, all that sorts of things, I will have a link down down below if you want to go ahead there and subscribe. I got a couple of videos up there and thank you so much for all those who are on this channel who watch the videos over there. They did so much better than I anticipated. I feel immensely blessed. So thank you guys all so much for your support. So let's get back to Harry and Meghan because this story broke kind of earlier this week and I went with a different story in a video and I kind of regretted that because then this story just kept going and going. And I was like, darn, I should have done this story instead of the one from the Daily Beast, which I still think it's an interesting piece. But this one is also a huge problem. And again, goes to show that Harry and Meghan have just continued to shoot themselves in the foot constantly. I mean, it's shocking. It's shocking how bad it is. What I found really interesting too is that there was an article that came up recently talking about how Meghan's the smartest royal. And I'm like, I'm sorry, but she has like, this has been a dumpster fire that she could have totally avoided, completely and utterly avoided. And she cannot strategize well. She cannot think through the outcomes of events. And that's what you have to do if you're in a royal circle. So I'm sorry, I just don't see her as the smartest royal because I think sometimes smarts comes with understanding your role in life, accepting that and being able to work within that. That shows me kind of greater intelligence than thinking you're the smartest person in the room and you can change a thousand year old institution. The world just generally doesn't work that way. But this story about Netflix, I think for Harry and Meghan, this is bad. This is really, really bad for them because their whole narrative is predicated on them telling the truth about what happened when it came to the racism allegations, the mental health issues, all these sorts of things. All these stories that Meghan spun to Oprah are predicated on them actually telling the truth and the royal family either lying or hiding things. But if it's reversed, Harry and Meghan have no brand anymore. Harry and Meghan are sunk. Their stands will continue to follow them, but most normal people will be go, 
I can't trust you, ergo, I'm gonna take my business someplace else. And that is not something you want if you're a business person. But Harry and Meghan, again, they're not great business people. They really stink at this. They really, really do. So without further ado, let me go ahead and read a couple of the bits that we have here from kind of various articles. I'll go to the New York Post first and then I'll go to the Times of London because I think it is critical that not only did this show up in the New York Post, but the Times of London and Valentine Lowe, who wrote the recent book about Harry and Meghan and the courtiers, he actually actually has a impeccable credential so that he's kind of repeating this I think is an indication that yes something is going on behind the scenes and that's not a surprise that's not a surprise at all because Harry and Meghan their titles are on the line their children's titles on the line and wouldn't you know it all of a sudden everything they've said about the royal family they're backpedaling they're backpedaling very very quickly so here's what the New York Post says Prince Harry and Meghan Markle's docuseries will debut on Netflix in early December, multiple sources told Page Six, but there are still lots of conflicts. Sources said Netflix and the series filmmakers were confused by some of the comments that Harry makes in his upcoming book being at odds with what he and his wife said on camera. And this is something very, very simple. If you're telling the truth, Generally, the truth should be consistent. When it comes to police work, any good cop will tell you that they generally appreciate the people and they generally think the people are innocent who can tell the story a story consistently over and over and over again, even days or weeks or months after the initial event. It's the people who change their stories, add bits in, say, oh no, I wasn't at the store, I was at the mall. Or I wasn't here, I was there. Or, oh, you know what? I said 6 p.m. I really meant 8 p.m. Cops hate that and that their radar goes up. That's that's just how police work works. <laughs> and I it would be so interesting to see what would happen if Harry and Meghan were stuck in a room with police officers and were grilled about their stories. Because you know what? When you have to craft a narrative, if you're not being all that truthful, you have to remember the details of the lie you told. And what happens is you miss things or you change things because you can't remember what you said initially, so you have to change things again. And here's what's so ridiculous. Like, did it not occur to either of them that you need to know this story well enough that you need to say it the right way, both in the reality TV series and in the memoir, that you're changing things? You shouldn't be changing things if it's the truth. There's nothing to change. There's nothing to change yet. Something may come to you later, but if there, if this is report is true, there are some deep, deep divides between what's in the memoir and what's in the reality TV series. There's some deep divides. Enough for people are like, are you opening us to lit up to litigation? This could be problematic for us. And this is problematic for you. And here's the thing too, Harry and Meghan, just like the royal family, you're connected to those businesses. If Netflix and Spotify put things out about Harry and Meghan that are found to be not true, all of a sudden it's their behinds on the line. It's their butts that are in the hot fire too because they tied their brand to you and your brand is going down. That's, again, businesses hate that. Granted, if you are in Hollywood, Yes, that does happen. A scandal comes up. Think of Johnny Depp. Everything that happened with Johnny Depp, they dropped him from the Fantastic Beasts movies. He lost out on other roles. And as this trial went on, at least in the States, basically they found that while both Amber and Johnny both did terrible things, they actually believed that Johnny was more the victim than Amber was. That's fascinating. And it really put all the studios and everything that pulled him from projects, it puts them, their feet to the fire going, why did you fire this guy who a jury of 12 people or however many were at, because it was a civil trial, it wasn't a criminal, criminal trial, criminal trials are always 12, I think civil is a bit different. But how many people were on there seem to all agree that while Johnny and Amber both did terrible things, he's the less guilty party and that Amber was perhaps making things up, then you look like the fool. You look like you took the word of a liar. And nobody wants that. Nobody wants that. Nobody wants that to be what they're known for or what their business is attached to. And so Harry and Meghan not being truthful, apparently, allegedly, that's a really... I mean, there's no coming back for that. From a business perspective, nobody will want to touch you if you do that because you put them on the line 
for litigation if you're not being truthful. You put them on the line for a lot of other things and the monarchy is powerful. In addition, it dilutes your brand. So why would you wanna be attached to somebody that's diluting your brand? Sure, Harry and Meghan may get you clicks, but if at the end of the day, people trust your brand less because they can't trust Harry and Meghan, again, from a business perspective, no bueno, that doesn't work. That does not work in the slightest, but here's what else they had to say. A lot in the show contradicted what Harry has written, so that was an issue, a senior Netflix source revealed. Then Harry and Meghan made significant requests to lawmakers to walk back content they themselves have provided for their own project. I love that the author said, whoever said this, say, they have to walk back the comments back they made in their own project. Again, Harry and Meghan have been caught spinning a narrative that wasn't all that associated with the truth. And we saw this in the Oprah Winfrey interview. And I know if you followed my channel for a while, you're aware of this, but they were inconsistent on the mental health issue story. They were inconsistent on that, when that happened, how long between when Megan told Harry and when they had to go to the Cirque du Soleil event. Harry and Megan were inconsistent. The timeline was unclear on that. And then when it came to the racist comments, absolutely completely different what Harry and Meghan said. Meghan said it happened multiple times while she was pregnant. Harry said it would happened one time when they first started dating. Those are two very, very different stories. Very, very different timelines. I think Meghan's story put a certain amount of malevolence in it. So it was something that happened while she was pregnant and vulnerable multiple times. People brought up this issue. He won't have security. He won't have this title. Oh, the heart, the heart mourns all the situation. So it was very much dramatized the way she, she shared the story. However, when you go back, Harry's is much different. It could have been an innocuous comment that somehow over the years got blown way out of control and happened over a series of months instead of one day, one perhaps even throwaway comment that was just like, I wonder how your kids will look. Or maybe, I wonder how she'll do here in, in the UK because she's American, she's an actress, she's ambitious. This perhaps isn't the best place for her. But having these two different stories, again, it's not a surprise at all that there's inconsistencies in what they're saying. Because I think what's at the heart of Harry and Meghan is that they're spinning a narrative. They have a narrative they want to create around themselves. Because that's what Meghan did. Meghan, as a D-list actress, that's what she did and nobody called her on her BS. Because who would care to see if what, Rachel from Suits, that was her character's name and her actual legal name, Rachel from Suits, who would care if she actually did work on Skid Grow or did actually write this letter that the first lady responded to, the first lady of the United States responded to about a soap commercial? Who would actually investigate any of this? Because nobody cared. Nobody cared if what she was saying was the truth. But now it's different. And now they have people, the people who are working from them too, their integrity, their reputations are on the line due to Harry and Meghan. So if they produce this documentary and then all of a sudden a chasm falls through because Harry and Meghan perhaps spun their own narrative about a particular situation that was documented to be untrue, again, they're sunk. And everybody who's working for them is pulled down with them. And I think that's what's happening with Harry and Meghan right now is that nobody is happy because everybody is being pulled down from their level to Harry and Meghan's level and nobody's happy about it. No one is happy about it. They don't want to be there. They don't want to be associated with the negativity of Harry and Meghan in that way. And they also are thinking, yes, Everybody kind of clamored to be part of Harry and Meghan, but now the tides have shifted. The power balance has shifted. Charles is now king. William and Catherine are now the prince and princess of Wales. Camilla is queen. So Harry and Meghan's ability to leverage things because I think the queen just kind of wanted to bury her head in the sand and go, I just want this to go away. Maybe if I, maybe if I don't say anything, maybe Harry will stop. That has gone away. I think Charles and William will do something and Harry and Meghan are nervous. And Harry and Meghan want the titles of prince and princess for their children. Even though the rest of Europe is going away from that, which I think gives Charles a huge amount of influence to say, I'm sorry, but no, your children cannot be prince and princess. They can be Earl and they can be lady, but we're not playing this game. I think Harry and Meghan are freaking out because they've lost all the power that they used to have over the monarchy. William's now a billionaire. I think one of the things I found really interesting was that Harry and Meghan, I feel like especially Meghan, really thought that everyone was on an equal playing field to a certain extent. Camilla was a duchess, Catherine was a duchess, she, she was a duchess. So 
in her mind, her illusion was that, well, everybody is equal. So I can attack them and everything because we're all at the same point equal standing. So all I can do is go up, whereas they can go down because we're at this level playing field. So maybe if I knock them down, I can raise myself up, I think is was her mentality. But that illusion has been shattered. Catherine is now the princess of Wales. She holds the same title Diana did. She is a woman of much more influence than she was at the beginning of September. Camilla is now queen of the United Kingdom. She has far more influence than she used to. And Meghan, I think, is floundering because it's like, oh my gosh, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? We need to walk this back. We need to respin this because we said all these things we knew weren't necessarily 100% true because we thought nobody would call us on it. And we knew the queen to a certain extent, and I hate to say it this way, but I think, I think it bears mentioning, they thought the queen was weak and they thought maybe they could manipulate her because their plan apparently, according to the Daily Beast, which is so ludicrous and ridiculous, I can't even imagine, is they were going to drop the reality TV show and the memoir, and then they were going to do a year-long <laughs> reconciliation tour, basically. And I actually, actually, as I'm saying this, I realized, I think I, co I covered this in another video, too, that that's so dumb. You can't torpedo your relationships and go, oh, well, we'll just rebuild. It'll be fine. That, there's feelings involved. It's not like an actual bridge that you can detonate and rebuild. That, that's, that's not the same thing as family dynamics. People's feelings get hurt. It's not bent steel, it's bent feelings. And feelings can last a long time. You can't just rebuild family relationships that have been fractured and shattered because of what you said, because you decided that, well, we're gonna release this now because we need this. And then we're gonna go on a reconciliation tour and that's gonna make up the next season of our reality TV show. It ain't gonna fly. It ain't gonna fly. And I think everybody's kind of wising up to Harry and Meghan and that's a big problem for them. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex wanted to hold the Netflix show until next year as they continue to edit. But as page six previously revealed, Netflix chiefs insisted it stream after the fifth season of The Crown, which launches November 5th. Now, multiple sources confirm that Netflix stuck to its guns and the Sussex series, which was the couple's idea, will debut in early December. Not only are Harry and Meghan being caught up in lies, they're getting a lot of pressure now from Netflix going, you owe us a series. I don't care if your grandmother died, you owe us a series. And that's how the real world works, Harry and Meghan. I know Harry was very coddled as a royal. I don't think he truly understood what it meant to be actually in the business world and work in the real world. You have to pull up your big boy pants, Harry. They don't care about your feelings. They care about the money. They care about the bottom line. You have drained them potentially of millions of dollars. They want a freaking product. They don't care if it burns your family bridges, if it burns your relationships, because you already made the decision to do that. The inconsistencies has more to do, I think, with, like I said, litigation and reputation issues than it does actually them caring about whether or not Harry trashed his family in it. I think they want the more dirt, the better. That's why they're going, we don't want you guys to edit anymore. We need this. We need this to be bombastic and dynamic and all these things that Harry and Meghan are trying to go, well, oh, wait, no, no, we don't, we don't. We don't want that. And it's like, but you made the decision. That was your decision to do that. It wasn't anybody else's decision. It was your decision. And Harry and Meghan, again, they have nobody but themselves to blame in this scenario. I mean, come on. This is so easy. It was so easy to avoid this. It really was. But again, Harry and Meghan, and I actually thought about this as I was in church today because part of the sermon was talking about thinking about kind of your life, not just right here, right now, but through eternity. Now, not everybody obviously is a Christian, but I think there is something to say for looking at your life, not only in this moment, but what it means 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years from now. Because if Harry and Meghan destroy their credibility now, they have to rebuild that. And that could take years, decades. They may never fully get it back. They may have never fully get it back. I think it depends on how big the lie is, whatever it is, or how big the inconsistencies are, which are essentially, I mean, they're lies, let's just say that. Or allegedly, just to protect me legally. You know, they're alleged lies, whatever.
That they're willing to take this risk goes to show not only how desperate they are, but how I think jealous they are of the monarchy, jealous they are of the real love story of William and Catherine, which they haven't shared, the real love story of Charles and Camilla, which they've kept pretty much under wraps. Wraps, And I think Harry and Meghan really are so desperate to cling to whatever they can from the monarchy that they're willing to say and do anything in order to get at least some of that influence back to them. And again, I feel like this puts everybody in a tough spot, except for, I think, to a certain extent, the monarchy, because they can say, we have stayed above all this. We have stayed above Harry and Meghan and their mudslinging, and we don't care anymore. We don't care anymore because we know the truth is with us. And I think I, I, there's always something to say for, yes, people can spin, you know, Joseph Goebbels, say the lie enough, it come, becomes the truth. And perhaps Megan is going down that line, just saying, if I say this enough, it does become the truth. I feel like that's the P&G story. If I say enough that the first lady cared about my letter when I was 11 and nobody knew who I was, that she personally wrote back to me, maybe, just maybe, if I say that lie enough, it becomes the truth. And unfortunately, reality should smack you in the face and go, I'm sorry, but a child who's 11 or 12 who wrote a letter to the first lady most likely did not change a multi media marketing campaign probably did not did not and if that was the sole catalyst wouldn't you think somebody would remember it wouldn't you think somebody would republish the letter from Meghan Markle going look we have this in our archives because this little girl she changed this company and I'm not saying what Megan did wasn't good or that she should receive any criticism for that kind of trying to drive to is that her telling this narrative that's clearly false that's damaging. It's not only damaging to her, it's damaging to Harry, it's damaging to their brand. But Harry and Meghan, I think, are doubling down on things. Instead of learning from their mistakes and kind of walking back going, well, I guess maybe we shouldn't have said these things. Maybe we should oh, think of something else, I guess. No, they're doubling down constantly. They're constantly going back to this again and again and again. And I think Netflix, again, and everybody else is wising up going, we can't risk this. You may be willing to risk it, but we can't. We cannot at all. And I'm sure they're going line by line in Harry's memoir going, okay, Harry, you said X, now you're saying Y, which one is it? And Harry's like, oh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know, Megan. I, th I feel like I hear the, the, like, the guy who did Harry in the Windsors, which is a satire show that you can find on Netflix. If I have a little clip I can find, it, it should be about 15 seconds because that'll get me before, I can show about 15 seconds, be seconds before copyright hits. So if I find someone, I'll put it in right here. I was just passing, thought I'd drop this book off for you. Oh, wow. I love this series, and I'm getting really good at staying inside the lines. <laughs> Sorry, I was just thinking about the show and that Harry, like one of his things is like he can't read, so he draws pictures. It's very, it's very funny. It's, it's some parts of it I don't get but I, I do think the Windsor's is funny. But anyways, page six goes on to say they have to finish the project very soon as it takes weeks for Netflix to edit and translate for other languages. Netflix needs a couple of months to do all the formatting, dubbing, subtitling, audio, all of that stuff that enables it to launch on the platform. And I think this also goes to show that Harry and Meghan have no respect for businesses, no respect for deadlines. And again, as a business, you need, you need things to go up. You know, I work at things and I try to make sure everything gets done right on time and it gives me anxiety if things are done, if not done by a specific deadline that has been requested of me. And sometimes things come up and you can't get to anything fast enough and that generally, I, that does happen, not any doubt. But Harry and Meghan, I feel like, are taking this thing was like, well, we're royals. We, we're not on a deadline. And Netflix is like, well, we gave you $100 million. Yes, you are. Yes, you are on a deadline. We need you to get this done ASAP. Now, please. Now, please. And it seems like Netflix is less and less amused with Harry and Meghan. We have this report now from The Sun, which I saw as I was editing this video, so I apologize for not that you cannot see my glorious face, even though you're probably fine actually not seeing it. And it says, Netflix bosses have told the Duke and Duchess of Sussex they will pull the plug on their multi-million dollar deal at any point if they are unhappy with what they produce, according to an industry insider. The couple and their team at Archwell were reported to have signed a $100 million contract. Were advised there are no guarantees what they create will air. 
It goes on to say, and it could mean they end up losing millions as they are yet to launch a show on Netflix and now allegedly want to edit the content produced for their new docuseries, according to page six. The Sussexes reportedly want to review the tone of some statements and potentially delay its release until 2023, despite it being scheduled for release later this year. However, executives at the Billion Dollar Broadcaster have final edit decisions where they can veto their clients' proposals or even end business deals. It is likely if the service doesn't green light any other shows, they will receive a kill fee as a standard in the industry. Netflix has already walked away from Megan's project Pearl after deciding the content was not what they wanted. A Netflix LA-based consultant told the US Sun, Harry and Megan are in a tricky place right now. Sure, they may have concerns, about the content in the can and what they said on camera about the Royals, but Netflix holds the power. In reality, it is their outlet and they have final say on what is broadcast. No talent is greater than Netflix. So while there may be concerns or pushback from the Sussexes on what they want to present on screen, Netflix can carry on. And should the streamers executives become frustrated, feel like a stalemate has been reached, or frankly, just get fed up, they are entitled to walk away altogether. The Sussexes and their team knew that going into the deal. Just because they are a Duke and Duchess makes no difference. If no settlements or agreements are reached, the deal could fold. If that happens, again, Harry and Meghan, their future business deals, it's gone. It's done. That's it. They may get a couple other things, but won't be ever as good as the Netflix deal because everybody will wonder, well, what happened? Why did it fall through? Well, you could say production issues, difficult managers, lack of leadership, lack of management. There could be a multitude of issues. Additional edits, I think, is the least of Harry and Meghan's problems right now. They decided they wanted to go to the States. They wanted to make it on their own. Well, you know what? When you try to make it on your own, that <laughs> requires sacrifices. That requires risk. That requires work. And I think they're finding out right now that when the work is not to your business leader's liking, yeah, you will get canned. And Harry and Meghan, I think, are in an incredibly precarious state right now. And the whole thing, their whole thing could fall apart. Because like the son said, and I think it's incredibly true, this is business, honey. This is not, you may be royals, but the you sold your soul to Netflix. And you know what? They want their pound of flesh. And if you're being, if you're a liability, not only legally, but in terms of production, in terms of content creation, so many different things. If you are a liability, if you are difficult to work with, if it's impossible to get you on task, they will drop you like that because Netflix and all the other streaming giants and basically all of Hollywood right now is stuck in this place where they've adopted this woke mentality and the rest of the world is like, yeah, no, we don't want this. And they're suffering. Ergo, they need good content. And if you can't do that, if you're a pain in the behind, they will drop you and they will let everybody in town know. They will let everybody in town know how difficult you are to work with, how little ideas you have, and how much you lack in terms of what you've sold to people. That will go around and that'll go around quickly. And again, your business deals that you've relied on, that you dropped the entire royal family for, may completely fall apart. And again, you only have yourself to blame. Well guys, thank you so much for watching today's video. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. And again, thank you so much for all the support on Royal Fashion News. And if you haven't watched those three videos yet, you really, really should. So guys, I will look forward to seeing you guys really, really soon. Bye.